Digging up dinosaurs is really hard, and I don't think a lot of people understand that. Dinosaur sites very rarely are easily accessible. The first part of the process is jackhammers and shovels, and it's 100 degrees, and you're being bitten by flies, and you're spending day after day, eight hours a day, jackhammering and shoveling rock just to try and hopefully find the rest of the skeleton. And it's not even a guarantee. It's a complete gamble. I'm Kelsey Abrams, and I'm the fossil lab manager at the Brick Museum. I get so excited, and I wake up every morning, and I get ready to go to the Burke because of discovery and because of mystery. I think it was predetermined that I was going to be a paleontologist from a very young age. I was born and raised in Wyoming, and the field next to my grandparents' house which is a big empty field, and my grandpa growing up would say, let's go find dinosaur fossils. And so every time it rained, we would go walk in that field, and we'd pick them up, and my grandpa would say, that's a dinosaur bone. And so I was hooked from a young age, like walking around, looking for things in the ground, looking for dinosaur bones. Knowing that I am contributing to science, that I am unearthing new species that are getting published on, that I am facilitating access to collections for researchers all over the world, that is incredibly exciting to me, because I am part of the process now. A lot of paleontology, it really boils down to a Cretaceous crime scene work. We have a body. How did it die? How did it get here? It's, it's crime scene work, but for a dinosaur that died 66 million years ago. The stuff that we're working on, it's not just a run-of-the-mill dinosaur that's going to go into collections and collect dust and no one's ever going to see. The stuff that we work on is relevant to science. So this is our T-Rex case. One of the dinosaurs could be a new species or at least contribute to a very rare set of fossils that we don't know a lot about. And this is my favorite one. So if you are born and raised in Washington and you want to see dinosaur fossils, you're going to have to travel you most of the time out of the state to see dinosaurs. But you can come to the Burke and you can see all sorts of prehistoric life that you cannot see anywhere else in Washington. And so we have to get these animals out of the ground in order to study them, but more importantly to be able to share you know, our knowledge and our discoveries with the public. A lot of dinosaurs people aren't ever going to have access to or get to see or experience a dig. And so it's really important to share this because you can't always drive 16 hours to a remote spot in Montana to look at a dinosaur. The area that we're working in is the Hell Creek Formations. This is an incredibly famous formation for late Cretaceous dinosaurs in North America. Some of the most charismatic animals that you can think of. So everyone can think of Triceratops and T-Rex. We find them here. The majority of the really nice Triceratops skeletons that you see at Smithsonian or the Burke Museum and other places in the country, we find in Hell Creek Formation and we find in this part of Montana. This is definitely dinosaur country. More T-Rexes and, and Triceratops have come out of Garfield and the adjacent Macomb County than anywhere else in the world. Each data point is something that helps us say a little bit more about this last episode in the story of dinosaurs. We're quite fortunate to be working in a really rich area with a lot of animals in it and a lot of really great preservation insights. And this is so exciting. This is the occipital condyle. This is the back of the skull of the triceratops. This is the ball and socket that holds a whole head onto the triceratops. Look how big that animal is. The flyby trike is exciting to us, particularly at the Burke, because we don't have a complete triceratops. On the landscape, they were probably the most common dinosaur. But the Burke Museum does not have a single individual specimen that's complete of a triceratops. 
and we're trying to peel this back to see all that is actually here. Just got a lot of bone right here. So here's like the kind of root of the tooth, and then here's. And we're at a particular site called the Flyby Trike, and this was discovered by Les Thomas, the rancher, as he was flying by in his little prop plane. And he was low enough that when he looked at this cliff wall, he uh, sure enough spotted a dinosaur. Hi, my name's Les Thomas. I found a flyby trike. I was gathering cows with the airplane and I seen the bone sticking out of the bank there. I try to let them guys know where I see them. So just nice big triceratops brow horn and a little bit of frill coming out of the hill. It's been amazing to have less looking for fossils for us mm -hmm. and then also dragging like big sandstone cigar shaped rocks out with this tractor mm -hmm. and doing all this helping of our crew. A lot of the public doesn't understand the years of work and the crews and the amount of labor that of love this process is. Without using ranchers and collaborating with the community, some of these dinosaurs would have never gotten out of the ground. Les is really good at coming up with ideas and ways to move these gigantic blocks. These animals have been covered in rock for 66 million years. There's nothing better to hold these animals together than the rock that they are preserved in. So our goal out here is to remove the animal in a chunk of rock and bring it back to the lab. And then in the lab, we are in a safe setting and we can carefully, slowly remove the rock. And then in those stable conditions, we can finally unearth and bring that animal to life and out of the rock. It's so exciting to uncover the mystery and unravel these discoveries and uncover these animals that we have collected from Montana because I don't know what's gonna happen in that jacket. I don't know what's gonna be in a block of rock. We see a little bit of the fossil. We see the tip of the iceberg. Get it. That sounded great. But it's completely a discovery process. I get to discover things, I get to unravel mysteries, and then at the end of the day, I'm contributing to science. All of that drives me, like I want to keep learning more and more and more. It's just that, that the thrill of discovery and excitement and unraveling these mysteries and teasing out even more questions. Yes! That's beautiful. So we got to put muscles When the rancher found flyby triceratops. The thing that he saw sticking out of the hill were the horns. This was the nicer of the horns. This is one of the brow horns, so the horns that stick up over the eyeballs. So we were able to bring a few tiny chunks of the triceratops back this year, but next year we'll really go get the rest of the head. So we have the trailer hitch. We have pretty much this whole structure. We found this piece. We have one of the horns. And I think this past summer we found at least ha another half of the frill, if not three quarters of the frill. Soon we're gonna be pulling in the hadrosaur that we collected. So hadrosaurs are big duck-billed dinosaurs. We collected a femur, some vertebrae, some ribs, a substantial chunk of the hind end of a hadrosaur. We thought all of this was gone. The fact that there's any of it remaining is just a miracle. And then we brought back the ornithomimid uh, ilium, as well as a fourth dinosaur, which it's called an oviraptor. So we had four dinosaurs that we found and recovered from Montana, which is pretty exciting. When you unearth a fossil and you're removing the rock from the fossil, you are the first human being to ever see that fossil, ever. Not only am I the one who gets to see the fossil as I remove the rock, but the public on the other side of the glass can see me doing that as well. You can come see relevant science happening in front of you and engage in that discovery. You can see the preparator uncovering tissue and be part of that experience and know that you are seeing actual science happening. It's fascinating and it's fun and this is part of the earth that we all share with each other and this is part of earth's history. And this is our history as well. And looking at the history and the tradition of the preparators and the scientists who have worked for the University of Washington and for the Brick Museum, they can't get rid of me. I'm never gonna leave. I love this job so much. It's so much fun. I have so much more to give to the museum. I love this collaborative effort in working with communities. I will be doing this until I'm 90.